My name is Alden Robson. I'm the owner of Fentimans Limited. Uh, we're a small company based in the northeast that make a, a, a range of botanically brewed soft drinks, and we also make a, a range of premium mixes. I was mostly involved in the, the hotel and catering trade. Um, spent quite a few years doing that. Um, going through a training course with uh, what was formerly Scottish and Castle Breweries many years ago, uh, working through the system there, uh, kitchens, restaurants, bars, um, downstairs in the, uh, the sort of cellar area, storage area, that sort of thing, uh, including a stint of the flight catering department at Newcastle Airport, you know, putting these catering meals onto aeroplanes, pre preparing them, that sort of thing. So my background is really the catering business as much as anything. Um, we did have our own pub that we bought privately many years ago. It was back in 1975, I think, which we kept for four years. We managed to, uh, it was a northwest Durham village, we managed to sell it for profit. And, uh, you know, that, that's probably, I would have probably gone back into that had I not found other things to do. If you have a business idea, I think you've got to find something that has a, what we call in the business a USP, a unique selling point, a real point of difference, something that will give you an edge over your competitors, that sort of thing. You know, uh, this is what I did with Fentimans by not producing carbonated soft drinks. We went into the, the more specialist area. So you, you need to find something with an edge, no matter what it is, even if you're just opening a shop or a cafe or whatever, you've got to find some sort of selling point that nobody else offers. And I think on top of that, you've got to be well financed. Um, you've got to have a contingency in there just so things, things go wrong. I don't know what, what it is, but Sod's Law seems to sort of kick in pretty hard when you're starting off. And eventually, as you develop, develop your idea, get it well funded, uh, and the thing is, as you grow, so have some good people around you. If you get really good people around you, it makes your job a lot easier. But it encompasses an awful lot of things. You know, uh, get the best advice that you can, get a decent understanding bank manager, but principally, you know, have an idea with an edge. Very important. Uh, well, it was the, the starting point, um, really. You know, a lot of years of um, planning went in beforehand, development and all this sort of thing. We'd virtually taken what was um, uh, a, a product that was brewed and fermented in a stone jar and uh, sold as um, uh, typically like a real ale. And we had to change the process because 20, 25 years had elapsed since the products were made that way and the old company closed down. So we had to uh, adhere to a different set of rules uh, and uh, plan accordingly to that. And um, uh, it, it, was, it was quite difficult. I did start off with my own small factory to begin with, of 2,500 square feet. Uh, one minute I employed six people. The week after that I had to get rid of them because we simply weren't making any money. Uh, the marketing was wrong, the sales area was wrong, but one thing I did get right was actually the way that we went to manufacture this stuff. So that was a saving grace, and this is what I mean by giving yourself an edge. We had that edge, but it took quite a few years after that to sort of stick with it and um, finally, you know, uh, get the investment, get the marketing right and uh, the selling point right, where we're going to place the stuff in the marketplace. Uh, it's uh, the, the, the sort of old memories which have faded now, but uh, when I sit down and think about it sometimes, it was, uh, it was shock and awe in many respects, you know, but <laughs> it sort of makes you what you are at the end of the day. Survival of the fittest, really. Well, I think we've been 20 years into it now. It's the number of products that we've developed, uh, I like to see something grow from scratch. We produce all of our own flavours, natural flavours. We do all of our own new product development. Uh, I'm using a consultant that I went to many, many years ago, back in the late 80s when we developed uh, the, uh, certainly the ginger beer product from two old recipes that were stuffed away in a drawer. It's see, it's seeing that sort of thing come to life, and even now, with the many changes that you face in the business, and as your business grows, it's the challenges that you face, and it's putting things right. And uh, I get a, a lot of personal satisfaction out of that. Of course, our growth has always been, it's been pretty solid. We've been very lucky in order to do that. It's just the planning and the development and the end result at the end of the day. Nothing happens overnight. It does take planning. It takes a lot of thought. But uh, it does give you close satisfaction, really, you know, after 20 years at it. Um, can't complain. Um, well, many years ago, it's been about at least 10 years ago, we approached by Famous Grounds Whiskey. And um, they wanted us to, uh, they're going to uh, invent a product called a ginger grouse, which was um, famous grouse whiskey and uh, ginger beer, using ginger beer as a mixer. And they talked about the perfect serve, and the perfect serve was a one, two, five mil bottle. Uh, so they approached us and uh, we signed uh, a contract with them to go ahead and do this. Uh, in order to produce a one, two, five mil bottle, we have our own proprietary branded bottle. Uh, the smallest one that we have is 275 mil, so we had to uh, invest in bottle mills uh, to produce the bottle and change parts in order to handle the bottle down the bottling line. So there's probably about £50,000 on my behalf invested in this project. And uh, 
we, we managed to do that. So the famous Grouse people were consisted of a, a marketing team, the sales team uh, from two separate companies. Uh, went out and uh, did a lot of um, they had off trade packs made, uh, packs made for the on trade and the off trade on shelf stuff with half bottles of whiskey in, small bottles of Fenderman's ginger beer and glasses and all this sort of thing. So a fair amount of money had been invested in this, including PR. So we finally got the thing going and it got off to a bit of a false start because the two companies involved fell out and the project never got going despite the investment beforehand. So I was left with a small check which covered about a third of what I'd invested in this bottle and uh, change parts and so forth. But uh, the worst thing was that we were left with two million bottles in the storehouse. We thought, what on earth do we do with two million bottles? So we better invent something else. <laughs> so we decided to develop a tonic water, and, uh, which we did. And uh, it's been uh, sort of uh, something which has happened by default. And actually the mixer side of the business now, which is very important, premium mixers are really you know, getting a foothold in the business now, both in the UK and Europe. Uh, so uh, we have developed these mixers, and I should think in about four or five years' time, these mixers will overtake the core business of the company. So it's something that's happened by default, which is something which is quite successful. So uh, you never know. But what I was saying earlier on, really, to anybody uh, starting off, you know, you've got to have the, uh, something with an edge, unique selling point. Uh, you've got to get very good people around you when you can afford them. It's essential that everybody is singing off the same hymn sheet and all this sort of thing. You need cohesion. You need people all working together for the same goal at the end of the day. My final piece of advice was never, ever give away any equity. That's your family silver. Hang on to that. And don't lose heart. You never know.